Well, folks, welcome to this week's A Sportsman's Life. Look who Mr. Jeff and I have with us. Mr. Whitetail is going to be part, has been part of our show for a few weeks. Larry is going to impart some knowledge each week and and some fun. We're going. <laughs> it's all fun. It and. It, it is all fun, and I am truly honored to be with you guys. I'll tell you what, Luke and I have been doing radio for a while, almost 11 years, every Saturday morning yeah. or throughout the week as well, too, and I've had the opportunity to spend time around Jeff through Luke, and I am truly honored to be part of this. And really what I'm kind of, my kind of part that I kind of see is this kind of a, a Q&A kind of thing yeah. where we'll talk about different hunting tips, learning about optics, learning about hunting gear, learning about rifles, all those kind of things. Yeah. Just pure simple information that you may already know, but you know, there are a lot of people getting into the outdoors. So we're gonna try to take it very basically and bring it forward. Excellent. And folks, if you think uh, running with these two rascals is not fun, this is, this is really serious hard work, but <laughs> we're gonna jump into our show. So stay with us every week. Uh, Larry's gonna be here, Jeff's always with us. We're going to have a great time, and we want you to be right here every week with us. As the sun sets in the western sky, one of the most recognizable sounds is the howl of the prairie wolf, commonly known as the coyote or coyote. Coyotes have been living in North America for over one million years. Since the early 19th century, when Lewis and Clark first encountered them, they have been the target of both ranchers and hunters in North America. Today there are roughly 500,000 coyotes killed each year and they still continue to thrive. They now find refuge in and around large cities in North America. The coyote is in the canid family which evolved in North America over five million years ago. Other canids include the jackal, wolves, and wild dogs. They are very crafty animals that adapt to their surroundings and have developed into extraordinary survivalists. As predators, they function well as pack animals or as singles and pairs. An interesting note is that when their populations are pressured, their litter sizes actually increase. They normally have a litter of five to six pups. Under pressure, they can go as high as 12 to 16 pups. As predators, they will kill and feed upon almost any game animal found in North America. And so, when we encounter them in a hunting situation, it's a sure bet that humans will do their part to help reduce the populations of these predators. Today, we're sitting in the blind and we have encounters with several coyotes and we're gonna see if we can't put an arrow in one. Stay tuned.
Thomas Luminock at work. We drilled that dude. He didn't go anywhere. I don't know if I got it on video, but there's more around me, so we're back to hunting. We'll be back here at the Buck and Pass Ranch. Well, folks, here we have it. We're on the ground here, out of the blind, and as you can see, there's my arrow there, Luminok, and, and I absolutely drilled this dude. So we'll get a little quick picture and send it on our way here. We're gonna go get uh, Demi, she shot a hog, so we're gonna go see if we can find it, but we'll be back, so. Yote down, one yote gone. All right, we'll be back. Well, friends, I want to show you what I use for night hunting. This is the Wraith by Sightmark. It's a, it's a digital, it's not thermal, but you can use it for daytime hunting. It has a color mode, it's color during the day, and at nighttime for shooting hogs and predators out to I've killed them out to 125 yards, but I side in for that distance. You could shoot them a lot farther. Go online to learn more about the Wraith. You can go to sightmark.com and check them out. Absolutely awesome hunting tool for day or night. Well, folks, it is Luke Clayton, and I want to show you something right here that I am very, very proud of. My gearhead bow. I've taken a couple of hogs with it, and I'm deer hunting. I'm down at my Bucket Bass Ranch at a buddy of mine's and I'm going to be deer hunting. Let me show you something here. Now, this is the coolest thing in the world and I am the first time I have ever shot a bow where you, with a shoot through riser. I'm going to look right at you here. There's a riser here. There's a riser here. Look at the arrow on this gearhead bow right in the middle. And if you think that doesn't make a difference, you know, all for many, many years, me and I guess every other bow hunter been shooting one side of the riser or the other. This thing shoots straight through. Folks, check them out online. This is the bow that I hunt with, and I've got a lot. I love it. Lots of confidence in it. GearheadArchery.com. Well, folks, it is your old buddy, Luke Clayton, and it's time for us to have a little cooking break. What do you say? Let me kind of give you an idea of a recipe that I've got going here that uh, is kind of a continuation from a couple of weeks ago. You might remember I took some upper ham meat on, a, on some venison there, a buck I shot last year, cubed it up and browned it with uh, uh, tomatoes, onions, and some chipotle peppers that I'd made around the house here that I actually grew the jalapenos and smoked them and made chipotle. Well, that made some good tacos or whatever we want to call it that day, but I froze a bunch of the stock. And here is some soup, some Mexican soup that we're making from that frozen stock. That frozen stock was simply uh, cubed up venison. It could have been just as easily wild pork and, you know, onions and, and tomatoes and, and the jalapenos or chipotle. But I froze that and then all I decided it would be good to have a little we could call this Mexican soup, whatever we want to call it. it, but it has cumin and all the Mexican seasoning in it, salt and pepper. And it'll, it's going to take probably about 25 or 30 minutes for these carrots. All I did is add some, some fresh yellow squash and chipped up some carrots and I put it in a skillet and we're going to put a lid on it. And in about 20 minutes, folks, we'll have a soup that will taste like it has been cooked for an hour and a half because of that stock. So here's what I'd like you to take away from, from this little cooking segment. Go ahead and make up some soup stock, if you will, with wild pork, venison, elk, whatever you're using, beef for that matter. Go ahead and make that up and freeze it. Then at camp or whatever, you could have a big bowl of tasty soup, Mexican soup, uh, in a matter of probably, how long does it take these carrots to cook? 30 minutes? and it's very very tasty. Well folks here is the finished product here. This soup took all of probably oh 30 minutes. Fresh squash, carrots in there, 
a good hearty Mexican soup from actually from that stock that you know that was frozen so hopefully this will give you a good tip here you know this right here is if you enjoy you know like Tex-Mex or cumin that type of flavor I think you're gonna really like this kind of soup now you could add any vegetables that you like you could put potatoes in there I guess you could put noodles but that'd be a little bit out of character a couple of good uh, corn tortillas I'm gonna put a little butter on these and get with it folks what do you think folks as an old outdoors writer I have used lots of products Smoke and Tex electric smokers the best smokers that you can find. This is Diz and this is Scott, my buddies. Diz, tell them how they can learn more about Smoking Tex. Yeah, obviously the number one source of information is going to be our website. It's got hundreds of recipes, it's got helpful guides, it's got all of our models and our accessories listed there. Uh, of course we, we have a phone number 888-922-1511 and you can will actually answer our own phones. That's true. And this, the main thing, the easy way, uh, smokingtext.com. You can learn all about it. Correct. And of course, we're on all the social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, etc. So take a look at us whenever you can and uh, whatever social media you'd like. And uh, we look forward to working with you. Well, folks, you know, a couple of years ago, Texas made it legal to hunt with air rifles, big bore air rifles. Now, me and my buddy, Mr. Wysoon here, Larry has got a, an air rifle that shoots arrows, also known as bolts, I have learned. Bolts. <laughs> bolts or arrows. And uh, this is the Seneca Dragon Claw, 50 caliber. It also shoots bullets. It does. I prefer to shoot the arrows because yep. it's a little bit different compared to everything that I've done in the past. I used to teach people, you ever going to shoot a bow again? I said, yeah, as soon as I can shoot it out of a gun. Well, <laughs> guess what? Now I can shoot a broadhead bolt out of an air gun. That's with right. Particular model. And we're out here uh, hog hunting on, on, on our buddy Jeff Rice's Buck and Bass Ranch. Got a broadhead on there. Cape Buffalo have been killed with this rig. Right, Keith Warren is, is taking Cape Buffalo, and I don't tell him what else he's taking in Africa. So it's, and, a, uh, it's a great tool. It's it's a new way of hunting, as far as I'm concerned, and, and I'm anxious to try it this year. And Larry, that's part of it. It's it's it was new to me when I first started shooting air guns about nine years. Big bore air guns, PCP guns. It was brand new, and that's was part of the allure to me. It was something new, and I got to learn about it. Now, so. Larry has the, the arrow hunting with the bolt, <laughs> or the arrow covered with the, with the Seneca Dragon Claw. Great setup. Now, if you want to use, now this is what I hunt with. This is Air Force Air Guns Texan. Now, this is the carbine model. They make a longer barreled model that gets a little more velocity, but uh, I've killed a, a bunch of critters, hogs, and, and to kill a nice buck with this rig last year so Air Force Air Guns Texan they make this is 45 caliber they make a 50 caliber which I haven't shot yet but this will generate over 500 foot-pounds of, of energy so bullets Mr. Wysoon's got his arrows you think well what what kind of bullets you'd think well it's an air gun maybe a little light bullet these are swage bullets here and uh, Nielsen Specialty Ammo makes them. Now, you probably can't see them this close, but they're a very well-made, well-designed bullet as far as for air guns, strictly. So Larry, I think we maybe give the folks a good primer in air gunology. <laughs> it is, it, it's a new way of hunting, legal now in Texas. Bows, this one can't be used during the archery season, but it can be used with an arrow during the regular hunting season. So. Just something new to play with and a new kind of adventure. And if you haven't tried it yet, let me suggest that you do. I think you'll be truly impressed. I think so, Larry. And for folks that, well, where do I get all this stuff? Pyramid Air is the largest air gun supply company in the world. Just go to Pyramid Air. They have people there that you can actually call if you have, you're going to have some questions. If you don't know someone that's already shooting these big boars, well, Pyramid Air has some folks that can help you out. So. Hopefully this little tutorial 
with Mr. Wysoon and myself. Hopefully it'll help you get started in something that's fun to do. For years when I hunted, I used one eye to look for game, the other eye to look for a rest. I learned a long time ago that while I shoot reasonably well on moving game when it comes to shooting free offhand stuff, when it comes to where you've got an animal out there and I'm excited, I want a good solid rest now. To this day, I still spend half my time looking for a rest. Well, I, that's not true because these days I always carry some kind of a shooting stick, whether it's a bipod such as this or even a tripod that Bog makes or, or even the trigger sticks kind of thing that are here that are from Primo's. But uh, I'm always looking for a rest. And if you're carrying one of the sticks, it works so very nicely in the fact that you can use them as a walking stick. And then when that shot opportunity happens, you know, if you can lay down, that's probably the, in a prone position, it's probably the most solid shooting position there is. Uh, if you're going to be, you can sit down, I still like to have the shooting sticks or something that I can rest on. And the more that I can make a three-point stance to where I've got something here, something under this elbow, something under this elbow, I'll do so. Uh, hunted a lot in Africa where you shoot off the shooting sticks, and a lot of times those are tripod sticks, and you're hunting in a situation where the vegetation is this tall. So there's no opportunity to lay down, there's no opportunity to sit up, you know, sit down on the ground, kneel. You're going to have to shoot with, from both, standing all the way up with both feet on the ground off of, of, of a, a, a tripod shooting type rest. When I'm hunting in the woods, one of the things I'm always looking, I'm working my way around to where if I don't have my shooting sticks with me, which is very seldom, but I'm always looking around and I'm looking for, okay, there's a tree that I can lean against, there's a fork of a tree that I can use. But, one of the things I'm going to try to do always is, just like if I'm coming up here, I've spotted a game man now over there that I'm looking at. I can come up, and what I'm going to do is put my hand against the tree, and then basically what I'm doing this, I'll shoot, it, shoot, the, left, shoot the left hand this time, because I shoot both left hand and right, is catch that tree, grab a hold of it, don't grab the barrel, and then I'm going to try to get my feet a little wider apart, make a good solid stance. If I can catch something on this side so I don't get this side to side wobble, I'll do that. But even so, now I can get a good solid rest right there. And again, not putting the barrel against, because you do this, you put the barrel against it, you're gonna mess up the barrel harmonics and you may miss even a fairly, not that far away shot. But if you can reach up there, grab that stock, lean into it a little bit, remember, what we, talked about in terms of trigger control and trigger placement as far as your hand is concerned, you're going to be a good shot. But always be looking for a good solid rest and if you can't, always carry some kind of shooting sticks because it's going to make all the difference in the world. You may be the best shot in the world. I've seen some of the guys that could put every bullet within an inch at 400 yards and put a really nice white-tailed deer out in front of them at 50 yards and miss the deer by 5 to 10 feet. So. Shooting at a target, shooting an animal, when that heart rate's really increasing and everything is, can go wrong, seem like it goes wrong, that's why you take a good solid rest whenever you're out hunting. Well, friends, welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on this week's show. Gosh, guys, we have so much fun doing this stuff, don't you think? I mean... <laughs> I know. This is out of this world fun. Oh. I can't tell you how much I appreciate and how honored I truly am to be with you yeah. guys. Well, and all those folks out there too. Absolutely. We want to thank you folks for joining us each week. We just we, we have fun bringing this stuff to you and we certainly appreciate you uh, joining us, liking us, sharing us and uh, and uh, joining us for another adventure. We'll have another exciting adventure next week, so stay tuned and uh, until then, be safe in the outdoors. <laughs>